main questions of the unit. Female reproductive system carry out several important functions. First, production of female sex cells oocytes. Production of female sex hormones, estrogens and progesterone. Provide the conditions for fertilization, the embryo and fetus development during embryogenesis. Participate in delivery and provide nutrition to the newborn during lactation. Female reproductive system organs are ovaries, uterine tubes or oviducts, uterus, vagina, external genitalia, and accessory glands including memory glands, we will discuss in the next lecture. This figure demonstrates the topography of female reproductive organs, ovaries, uterine tubes, uterus, vagina, external genitalia, you can see here also urinary bladder and female urethra as well as rectum. Ovary is a parenchymal organ consists of stroma and parenchyma. Stroma represented by thick connective tissue capsule tunica albuginea Covered by simple cuboidal epithelium, mesothelium, called sometimes geminal epithelium. Connective tissue septa. Connective tissue concentrated in the middle, in the central part. Here it contains a lot of large blood vessels and nerves which enter and exit through ovarian ligament. So, medulla in the center and cortex at the periphery. In the cortex there are follicles at different stage of development and their derivatives. At this figure you can see primordial follicles the most numerous and small. Then primary follicles, secondary follicles, you see antrum, the cavity with fluid, mature, tercel follicle, or graphene follicle. Then moment of ovulation, release of oocyte. Then for the mature follicles, the corpus luteum develop and corpus albicans. So, some more details about follicles. Primordial follicles located in the cortex, just under the capsule. The most numerous follicles up to four hundred thousands in a newborn girl. All of them developed in embryogenesis. Here's a capsule and primordial follicles. Here the capsule covered by geminal epithelium. 
In the center of primordial follicle, there is primary oocyte. It's nucleus, nucleus, and cytoplasm, covered by simple squamous follicular cells. Primary follicles appeared after birth. They are awakened follicles. They are covered by simple cuboidal epithelium. The primary oocyte is growing. Cuboidal epithelium cells contain round nuclei. A late primary follicle contain two, three layers of follicular cells. The oversight is growing, increasing size, and accumulating your conclusions. The special membrane around zona pellucida appeared. It looks like basal membrane but no fibers, only ground substance, proteoglycans and glycoproteins. Around follicles, connective tissue erect, and connective tissue membrane called teca appeared. Secondary follicles appeared only sexual maturation and then in the beginning of every ovarian cycle from primary follicles appeared up to 20 secondary follicles which grows quickly, it called large growth. It continues in about two weeks up to the middle of the ovarian cycle. In the secondary follicles, follicular cells continue to proliferate intensively and appeared many up to ten layers of follicular cells and they start to produce follicular fluid. Initially it appeared it in several places but later uh, these droplets fuse together. The teca continue to grow and differentiated and two layers inner and outer layers appeared. Inner layer contain numerous blood vessels and endocrine cells. They called tecocytes. They produce secrete the precursors of female sex gamon estrogens which produced by follicular cells and to release into the blood or initially accumulated in follicular fluid and then diffuse and enter the blood. Primary oocyte is growing very quickly and became more than 100 microns. Your conclusions accumulated and at the periphery cortical granulus appeared. The zona pellucida became much thicker. Usually only one of the follicle reach maturity called tertian follicle or graphene follicle. This follicle reach the size one or two centimeters. A lot of fluid 
follicular fluid accumulated inside. This fluid push the oocyte to the periphery and this structure called cumulus or forucus like heel contain primary oocyte it reach the maximal size up to 150 microns the largest cell in the body the most pronounced zona pellucida and these follicular cells these their processes form the corona radiata and other follicular cells at the periphery called granulosa cells and together form the granular layer teca interna and teca externa outside this picture demonstrate all type of follicles primordial follicle primary secondary follicle this antrum and tertial follicle this cumulus forucus everywhere is primary oocyte this tetraploid set of chromosomes their cells are rested in prophase of the first division of meiosis it corresponds to the stage of growing. It's mature follicle, primary oocyte, zona pellucida, corona radiata, cumulus aphoricus, molecular fluid, granular layer, and teca. Teca interna and teca externa. This is cumulus aphoricus at high magnification of microscope. Primary oocyte in zona pellucida. And you can see the processes of follicular cells which go through zona pellucida and connected this cytolemma of the oocyte and feeding it help to grow help to exchange of substances because it's too large for independent growing because no blood vessels inside follicular epithelium blood vessels only in teca interna distantly three oocyte membrane visible under electron microscope oocyte cytoplasm cytolemma somewhere here zona pellucida it's here Follicular cells, these processes, it's corona radiata. Cumulus of forucus under scan electron microscopy. The, the visible surface of cumulus of forucus, follicular cells. After freeze fraction, some follicular cell some corona radiata removed and you can see primary oocyte if you remove it you will see the cavity of cumulus aphoricus with follicular cells. Ovogenesis 
its development of female sex cells. As compared to spermatogenesis, it also contains phase of proliferation, growth and maturation, but no formation as in spermatozoa. Proliferation takes place in embryogenesis before birth. Small growth in ovary before sexual maturation take place after birth. Large growth take place after sexual maturation. It's continue two weeks in postmenstrual period. It's follicular phase of ovarian cycle. Third phase maturation start in ovary and finished continue in uterine tubes it start just before ovulation and finish after fertilization and its duration several hours as a result every month every ovarian cycle appeared only one ovum as compared to billions of spermatozoa. This slide demonstrates tecocytes, endocrine cells located in teca interna. They stain in yellow schematically. Under the luteinizing gomon, they produce from cholesterol androstendion androgen similar to male sex gomons but it doesn't enter the blood but diffuse through the basal membrane to follicular cells which convert androstendion to estrogens using the enzyme aromatase Estrogen diffuse into the blood or initially accumulated in follicular fluid and then slowly diffuse into the blood in teca interna blood vessels. So you see here the ovary, medulla and cortex. primordial, primary and secondary follicles and tertial follicle. When one follicle reaches maturity, it produces special locogons canadacronin which kill other secondary follicles and they die by apoptosis and you can find the remnants of oocyte folding zona pellucida of primary oocyte and follicular cells died and teca cells tecocytes around proliferate and start to directly produce some estrogens. And these single maturographin fol follicle still to grow and reach the maximal size up to one or two centimeters large. It push the capsule to Nicarboginae and blood circulation here uh, decreased and this region of capsule and follicle died and the pressure of fluid still increased and one moment it destroyed its wall destroyed and oversight covered by corona 
parodiata and zona pellucida release into abdomen cavity and enter to the fallopian tube to overduct uterine tube and from the remnants of ruptured follicle the corpus luteum developed it the new endocrine gland it's temporary endocrine gland but initially the bleeding take place from ruptured blood vessels and blood clot appeared in the middle it called corpus hemorrhagicus then follicular and tucker cells start to proliferate intensively and blood vessels growing between from the periphery from connective tissue so this first stage of development called stage of proliferation and vascularization then these follicular and tucker cells convert to luteum cells and after that they increase in size and start to produce progesterone and this endocrine gland duration of life maybe two weeks or six months if uh, no fertilization if no embryo appeared corpus luteum died and convert to the corpus albicans it died by apoptosis and corpus albicans it's growing of dense irregular connective tissue on the place of died corpus luteum and this corpus luteum size about two centimeters and duration of life two weeks it corpus luteum of menstruation if fertilization and embryo appeared and it's sent the chemical signal to the mother hypothalamus corpus luteum continue to grow and reach three or even five centimeters in diameter so more than ovary itself it and it secrete a huge amount of progesterone necessary for the pregnancy but finally it died and replaced by dense regular connective tissue and convert to corpus albicans and its function functions that carry out placenta this is a micro photogram of corpus luteum you can see large endocrine lutein cells in uh, usual preparations stained by gematoxylin and azin for example you can see vacuoles because uh, progesterone is steroid hormones lipid in nature produced from cholesterol 
so it's also diluted these inclusions secretory inclusions diluted in organic dissolvents like any lipid inclusions corpus albicans is dense irregular connective tissue contain few cells contain a lot of collagen fibers bundles going in all three directions so it looks like typical rupture which appeared on the place of any defects in the body our own cycle the cyclic changes in ovary it regulated by hypothalamus through the hypophysis and anterior lobe of hypophysis produce three hormones follicular stimulating the gray lines Follicular stimulating hormone stimulate the growing large growing of the follicles and secretion of estrogens by follicular cells. So this phase of our cycle called follicular phase and its duration about two weeks if in the whole our own cycle duration 28 days it's the middle duration of our own menstrual cycle it may vary from 22 till 32 days but we will take the average duration most of uh, women has it so follicular size before ovulation for ovulation the huge amount of luteinizing hormone necessary and luteinizing hormone also stimulate the formation of corpus luteum but for production of progesterone for blossom of corpus luteum luteotropic stain in black duration of lutein phase also 2 weeks and then if no fertilization and no embryo appeared luteotropic hormone stop to release and luteinizing hormone also stop to release and corpus luteum died by apoptosis and stop to secret progesterone this is a ovarian cycle part of the ovarian menstrual cycle